So here we are with static electricity. Now, we know that electricity is the movement of charges inside a conductor, but we have got other materials that are called insulators. But these insulators, they also build charges on the surface. But these charges, they do not move. They do not move, they are static. And that's the word static electricity. To be static simply means not to move, to be immobile. So we'll be looking at the electricity that is immobile and it builds on the surface of a material. Now, before we go a little bit further, I want to prove the existence of static electricity. And for me to prove the existence of static electricity, I need to look at the basic unit of matter itself, an atom. In chemistry, I've learned to say an atom is the smallest particle of an element that takes place in, in a chemical reaction. But today we are interested in the subatomic particles of that atom. So I'm going to draw a structure of an atom and I'm going to explain how these subatomic particles brought about the formation of static electricity. Now, when we look at the structure of an atom, there is a center part of an atom which is called the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we have got two subatomic particles. The first subatomic particle is called a proton. Then the other one is called a neutron. Now, around the nucleus, we have got what we call energy levels or shells. And along these shells or orbits, there is what we call electrons. Now, like we said, electricity is the movement of charge. So these subatomic particles are charged. Now, according to chemistry, the proton is positively charged and the electron is negatively charged. The neutron, it has no charge. So in most cases, they, they put zero. Now, when you look at the electrons which are negatively charged and the protons which are positively charged, in an electrically neutral atom, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons, meaning that we have the same number of positive charges and the same number of negative charges. That kind of a scenario or situation is called uh, an electrically neutral atom, meaning the net charge, the total charge of the system of an atom is zero. Now, when this atom begins to involve itself in chemical reactions, it begins to lose and gain electrons. So in static electricity, we'll be looking at how electrons will be moving from one surface of the material to the other. So according to chemistry, we have learned that when an atom gains electrons, it becomes negatively charged. And when it loses electrons, it becomes positively charged. So we'll be looking at materials. So if a material begins to lose electrons, at the end of the day, it begins to attain a positive charge. And when it begins to gain electrons, it begins to attain a negative charge. Now, today we are going to look at the transfer of charges. The transfer of charges. Like I said earlier, when we look at static electricity, these charges, they do not move inside the conductor, but they build on the surface of the conductor. But electrons are mobile. They can move from one surface of the material to the other surface of the material. Now, we have got processes which are called transfer of charges. One of the transfer, the processes of the transfer of charges, it is when
by friction. When we have got two materials and we begin to rub them against each other, the friction that is between the two materials allows electrons to jump from one surface of the material to the other. That process is what we call charging by friction. So if I've got a material, and this is a polythene rod, and I'm rubbing it against a woolen cloth. The rubbing against the rubbing against will cause friction. And this friction will give electrons sufficient energy to jump from one surface of the material to the other surface of the material. So electrons will jump from the cloth to the woolen cloth, to, to, to the polythene rod. Electrons will jump from, they will get knocked out from the woolen cloth into to the polythene rod. So these electrons, they will not enter the polythene rod, but they will actually build on the surface of the polythene rod. And in some cases, when you get this polythene rod and expose it to a piece of paper, the piece of paper will attach itself to the polythene rod. And this actually shows to say that this charging by friction has taken place. The next subtopic that we are going to look at is detecting static charges. Static charges can be detected by an instrument which is called an electroscope. An, ele an electroscope does not only detect electric charges, but it also measures the amount of electric charges. It detects and measures the amount of electric charges. To understand how an electroscope operates, I will draw a structure of an electroscope where I will take you through each part and how it plays an important role for this electroscope to detect and measure electric charges. So with me here on the board is the structure of an electroscope. An electroscope has got a metal cap on top of it which acts as if it's the head and that's where the charged object is brought closer or in contact to. And we have got an insulator here that prevents the metal cap from coming into contact with the metal case that is around the electroscope. Then when we look down here, we have got a plate. This plate is a metal plate. And attached to this plate, we have got a gold leaf. We have got a gold leaf. And the space that you are seeing here is actually called the glass window. 
in the glass window. That's why we see, we, 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 we observe everything that is happening inside the electroscope. Then we have got a scale that will help us to measure the amount of electric charges that an object is dissipating. Then around or the outer case of an electroscope, we have got what we call the metal case that holds the glass window in two positions so that we can observe what happens inside an electroscope. So how an electroscope functions is this. When I bring a charged object closer to the metal cup, what happens is that the charges of that charged object will then come and spread down to the plate. So if I attach a charged object, if this is a charged object, it, has got, it is negatively charged. If this charged object is negatively charged, the negative charges will spread down to the plate and to the gold leaf, meaning that the plate and the gold leaf will have the same net charge. So meaning they will share the same negative charges, the plate will become negatively charged, and the leaf will become negatively charged. Now, what happens is that according to the law of electrostatics, when like charges are brought together, there is always a force of repulsion. So the gold leaf will deflect. And as the gold leaf will deflect, we'll look at the scale here. And the scale will help us to actually measure the amount of electric charge that is being dissipated by this object by looking at how the gold leaf deflects away from the metal cup. And this is how an electroscope operates. Now, with me are two diagrams here. The first diagram is actually showing the internal part of an electroscope when a charged object is not actually brought closer or into contact with the electroscope. So when there is no charged object that is put at the metal cup here, there is no deflection in the gold leaf. But once I bring the charged object into contact with the metal cup, the charges will spread down. So meaning the negative charges will spread down here and here in this manner. So the metal plate and the gold leaf, they both have the same charge, which is a negative. And the repulsion is what helps us to detect, to say, this is the amount of electric charge that is being dissipated by this object. So as you can see in the diagram, the gold leaf is deflecting away from the metal plate. And this deflection is caused by repulsion. So this is how an electroscope operates in detail. Now, if you want to, if you want to bring the gold leaf back to its original position, if you want to discharge an electroscope in other terms. If you want to discharge an electroscope, what you need to do is that you need to bring into contact you need to bring into contact with the metal cup a positively charged object. When I bring into contact with the metal cup a positively charged object, the electrons that were spreading down here that caused the deflection will now be changed in that direction. They'll be heading up to go and balance up the positive charges. 
the negative electrons will be attracted to the positive charges, then at the end of the day, the gold leaf returns to its original position. This is what we call discharging. To cause an electroscope to become neutral at the end of the day. Learners, I think that's all for today. Watch out for the next lesson.